Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Tune in Tuesday with Cicero and Press. I'm Amy Hopkin and it's lovely to be back um, this week talking about the secrets of Snowdonia with Alex Kendall. Um, Alex Kendall is an international mountain leader, both in the UK and abroad, working with groups in the mountains on weekend trips and longer journeys and in the office on logistics. He has been walking in Snowdonia for most of his life, explored these mountains thoroughly as a student. He writes infrequently for a few different online publications and developed the Snowdonia Way, which is a long distance trail um, that we're gonna be talking about today. And his guidebook to that was published by Cicerone in 2017. Um, he's also led various overseas expeditions to various places, including Svalbard, Oman, India, but always looks forward to a walk in the mountains in the UK. Um, I'm going to welcome Alex in a few minutes, but for now, um, if you have any questions, Hannah, my colleague, is on Facebook and Twitter and on email. So if you have any questions, please um, send them to us on, on Facebook, on Twitter at Cicerone Press or to live at cicerone.co.uk. Um, yeah, and I will put those to Alex as we're going through and there'll be some at the end as well. So. Yeah, for now, um, welcome Alex Kendall to talk about the Snowdonia Way, Snowdonia Low Level and Easy Walks North and his upcoming guide, Snowdonia Low Level and Easy Walks South, which is coming out in September. So welcome, Alex. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Amy. All right. Be here. Um, <laughs> so we're going to cover um, Snowdonia in quite a lot of detail because I feel like you've been there. You must have walked all over it. Um, and yeah, so you've got your long distance route, the Snowdonia Way, and then you've also done these two books to low level and easy walking. Yeah, no, I have, yeah. It, it sort of uh, came about um, a few years ago where, so I've, I've, I've used to come, I'm in Snowdonia now. Uh, I was gonna position the, uh, the laptop with a view, but you don't wanna see the view right now because <laughs> it's mostly sort of clag and rain, but it's gonna be nice on Friday. So um, if anyone's thinking of going for a day walk, uh, it's the time um, to start thinking about it. But yeah, so the, I mean, if, if anyone that knows the National Park, uh, it's it's actually quite big. Um, it's only uh, it's about the same size as the Yorkshire Dales, actually. But the Yorkshire Dales looks on a map much larger. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Um, and it's only it's only really at least sort of 200 square kilometers sort of smaller than the Lake District, which is known as being quite large. So it is it's, it's a big area, and most people sadly only flock to um, Snowden. Uh, and the mountains around Snowden, for obvious reasons, of course, um, but there's a lot more else to see. Yeah. And, and I hope we can, we can go into some of that. Right. Yeah, we are, yeah, <laughs> of course. Are we doing this anyway now? <laughs> yeah, so should we start? Oh, I think we've got a bit yeah. of that. I don't know what that's with. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought a really nice way to get into looking at Snowdonia would be to look at the Snowdonia Way, uh, which is yeah. a route that you created and wrote the Cicerone guidebook for um, and I thought that would be a good way of exploring Snowdonia because as you said it's a really big area um, and it would be quite easy to get bogged down in go through each individual place um, so I think yeah if we go through this route and see yeah absolutely where. yeah so I, it's it's not only do, Shall I share my screen now? This yes, yeah. Anyway, would, everyone uh, like to see the front cover if you haven't already, <laughs> which you should have done. Um, right, I want to find this. Okay, right, I'm going to share this with everybody. So if you are watching, if this doesn't work, uh, right, let me. Perfect. This should be sort of fullish screen. Yeah, oh, that is for me anyway. So I'm enjoying it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this is only a way, so this isn't just the uh, Cicerone guidebook. Um, this is the only guidebook uh, to what is effectively a new route. Um, I mean, Amy very kindly said I, I came up with it, but um, of course it, it uses, uh, so I, I, I may have came up with the bits of it um, to be, to be um, modest, but, but the idea, I mean, of, of, of linking all of these uh, famous places within Snowdonia uh, goes back um, thousands of years. I mean, a lot of these these trails that you walk. By the way, if, if you're looking at the maps at the right on the right hand map, the the, the red line is the sort of the low level route. I guess lots of people will see sort of the main Snowdonia Way. And the blue 
uh, the blue lines are the alternative sort of mountain uh, routes. Um, and yeah, I mean, so it, you, a lot of these trails follow, you know, Roman uh, roads, they follow, you know, um, routes that were created by sort of the Celtic tribes uh, that lived in the area even before the Romans and, and sort of since then, you know, these old routes of the mountains. Um, so it's really kind of a logical way of linking together the major uh, inland settlements of, of what is quite a long national park. You know, if you, if you consider that up here, Snowden is there, if you can see my mouse, and if you can see my mouse, can you see the mouse? Yes, see the mouse. yes. Excellent, great, great, yeah, so <laughs> you, can actually, you can actually make this into a pointer, but that'd be far too much like teaching, so I won't do that. Um, yeah, so that, that's Snowden up there, which is really far north, actually quite near the, reasonably near the north coast, and you can see Angleton Court up here from Snowden, so people just come into Snowden and then leave via the A55, you know, you've missed out 95% of the national park, which would be a shame, so that's why I was so keen to explore this southern area with the route. Um, oh, oh, would you, should, should we go through it so bit by bit in case anyone's un unfamiliar? Yeah, I think that's really um, and, and you should be familiar because it's an excellent route, uh, although I didn't come up with it. So go and find out for yourselves by firstly buying the book uh, uh, for lots of money uh, and then going to walk it, um, which I believe you're allowed to start from next week. I know we're going to talk about current sort of this summer plans later. So just to briefly go through the route, don't worry if you've seen, if you've done it or you've uh, seen, so I've done a few talks here and there about it. Um, we start in the south, uh, so I'll, I'll leave the map here uh, and then we have some sort of inspirational photos, I hope. If you, if, me, if, you, if you look at the photos and you think they look terrible, this probably isn't for you. Um, There's probably other things to do. <laughs> but anyway, so Mahamplath to Dolgethlai, uh, which is the, the most southerly section really fantastic. This is actually coming down off Cadaridris on the high level route. So I just love this sort of sunset coming across the mountain and, um, and, and, and really sort of enter the National Park via Corris. You see a lot of the southern slate uh, workings uh, that are all around so this, this area um, just north of uh, the, the, uh, the Dovey, uh, which, which is a really, really interesting area. And you go up some valleys that you really don't guess up uh, other, on regular walks. So it's um, yeah, it's a good little sort of secret way through. Uh, then after that, uh, we continue north. Um, this is a tremendous view. You've got the Rinogiv uh, Mountains on, on, on the left here uh, of the trail, um, which is obviously quite famous as, as being, sort of, if you're in Harlech, you would have seen that the mountains behind you are the Rinogiv. And here we sort of go through the middle, following a lot of what was the San Helen, which is um, probably the most complete part of the old Roman road that um, runs all the way up Wales. And you can still walk on bits of it and it's been marked on the maps but that's quite quite special um as you can see here quite quite in a nice sort of level sort of balcony path i call it above the above the valley uh with Flynn transvinus in the distance just there which is uh yeah you could go around it the next day and the next day is yeah yeah so transvinus to beth geller uh it's quite a long day we're sort of we're now sort of about halfway up um, you can uh, obviously split this halfway. It's why I quite like both of the longest days, which is this day and the last day, you can split into two. So I normally suggest people do it over six days, but you can take eight, seven, 15, and get lost and take a month if you really want. Um, but it's there. This, is, this, is, this cross is probably my favorite part of Snedonia, which is uh, the Fistiniog, or the Vale of Fistiniog, which sort of runs from Portomatic up to Blaina Fistiniog. And um, probably the well, I don't. I mean, obviously, people do go walking there. So if you're a regular walker, you'll be like, oh, I know all these places. But uh, you know, you hardly see, you don't see that many people uh, walking up in the valley here, um, unless maybe they're heading up sort of into the Morwins. Um, so, and this is just a, a, a sunset I captured from looking down the valley um, towards the sea. So Portmadoc is just where the sun is about to set. There, it's a really beautiful place. And my only regret of the Snowdonia Way, actually, of the whole thing, is that it doesn't go. It just it doesn't go up the valley, because you can actually walk all the way up the valley, which you can. Which there is a route in my Snowdonia low-level walks north, uh, which does the entire valley in one walk, about 13 miles. Uh, that's probably my favourite one of that book. Um, but it, it just can't. If, if you end in Blaenau Snowdonia, there's no obvious route out that doesn't involve walking on an A road. Um, but yeah, okay. So you get to Beth Gellert, and now you're properly in the north of the park. Gellert's, um, Beautiful village, of course, famous for the story of the dog. If you don't know the story of the dog uh, by the book, um, it's, it's, it's a very a beautiful story and you'll probably have heard of it if you can Google it. But uh, yeah, have a look and um, go and visit Beth Keller. Lovely place. 
Um, and then we have, then we sort of, then the route takes a little bit of an odd, I'm not sure you can see Dog with Ellen because I've got the, um, I'm just moving my uh, little Zoom box over to the left so I can see it. Okay, so yeah, we go from Beth Geller over to Dog with Ellen. This was quite an interesting bit of the route. This is probably the most unusual bit because from Beth Geller, you could head up to Carnarvon, you could go up straight to Penny Pass and then up sort of this way to, towards Bangor. But I wanted people to sort of see this part of the park. And fundamentally, it matters for the next day because you want to get up hearing and then through uh, the Ogwin Valley. So coming along here, going up uh, the Nant Gwynant and then crossing uh, the pass, the Bulch, which you can see in this photo, looking back at it you know, and, and it's Snowden's on the right. Uh, but obviously you don't go up it unless you're doing the high level route. So you end up in Dol with Ellen, which is um, uh, quite a small place. It's got a few places to stay, uh, but it's a really beautiful valley. Um, that I think is missed out by a lot of people that go past on the um, on the A road, go up over the pass to Blanda Fastinio. So definitely stop there next time and have a look around. Then we are, yeah, then we continue north through the Ogwen Valley, which needs no introduction. Uh, Travan and the Kanadai and the Glidai, uh, all up here on either side, most spectacular pass, uh, which brings you out to Bethesda, which um, probably could be a nice place. Um, if anyone's living there and watches this, uh, don't be offended, but there's nowhere to stay. Uh, you have to get the bus to Bangor, which I think is a real shame, because Bethesda is actually a really nice uh, town. Uh, it's got really nice, well, it's got a few nice pubs and um, some cafes, but there's just nowhere to stay, or hardly anywhere. So please, if you're listening to this and you fancy investing in a hotel or a b, &B somewhere very nice, go to Bethesda. Um, uh, yeah, it's very beautiful. And then finally, of course, we have the big final day or two days if you want to stop in Hanoverken uh, across the Carnedai or around the north coast so you're looking at the sea all day really beautiful um, and uh, yeah you get the, the Carnedai which is the sort of the most northerly set of mountains in Snowdonia uh, have all, a, a ridiculous amount of ancient sites in them you know they were they were there's, there's a I looked up somewhere it said you can there are about a thousand individual ancient sites just in the Carnodai Mountains, including things like the Standing Stone, which I've added this photo in the bottom, um, which of course, you know, um, predates any of the uh, other structures that you'll see. You know, this is 4,000 years old, these stones. Uh, and actually I quite like this photo because you can't quite see it, but if you see that there's the stone and then in the background, you've got a electricity pylon. Um, so, and it, so, in between the stone and the electricity pylon, there's a track which you can walk up, and that is a Roman road. So you've got electricity pylon from now, you've got a Roman road from 2000 years ago, and then you've got a standing stone from 4000 years ago, all within about 50 meters, which is quite interesting. And I mean, I guess people do need electricity, but it seems a little bit of a shame they've got to put electricity pylons over here, but they've got to go somewhere, I guess. Um, Okay, so that is oh, that is Snowdonia, uh, Amy. That's Snowdonia Way, anyway. So I suggest everyone walks it, preferably not at the same time, and at least a meter apart. <laughs> Thank you for taking us through that, Alex. Oh, I think my audio quality is a bit dodgy today, so I do apologise um, if that keeps cutting out. But um, yeah, I'm really glad, Alex, that you talked about the Vale of Fastiniog, um, because I've had some really wonderful holidays in that area. Um, and yeah, it is a shame that you can't get all the way up the valley on this walk, but you know, I'm sure you could do that as a little side trip, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you, I mean, you can. That It just requires a bit of a, like I was trying to make a low level route. And I thought, well, if you go out the Vale of the in the Snowdonia way, and then jump straight up over to Dol with Ellen, mm. you miss out, but you miss out then Beth Geller and then Brennan, and that would be, right. you can never do a perfect route that satisfies everybody, but you know, it just means that you just have to come back and walk that extra bit. And you, so, yeah. And I suppose you have offered the mountain route alternative, haven't you? Um, so I wonder if you could talk to us a bit about that and maybe which is your favourite section? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, the, the, the mountain route is, is, is a proper adventure uh, and quite hard. Uh, I've, I've only actually done it, I think, twice. Um, just because, it, I mean, I would recommend nine days and it really do, it is hard to do it in less, unless you're either running or start super early because um, there's mm. some big there's some big days um, 
believe it or not, probably the biggest. Uh, I mean, you, so you've got some spectacular mountains. You, you've got you, the, the, the famous ones. You'll know you've got Kader Idris down here. You've got Knif, Mowen Mauer. You've got Snowden, uh, Mol Shabod, uh, all of the glitter, the entire ridge of the Glidderai, which is um, actually not as hard as you'd think. It's, you, once you're up there, you sort of just sort of potter over the tops. Really nice. Uh, and then you, and obviously you got over the Karnedai, which is a, another not, quite, quite a big day, but you can stop after that and then continue to come with you the next day. Um, believe it or not, the, 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 the hardest day on this entire route is, so normally, as you've seen, I've split up one day of the low level route into two days of the high level route. So that, that's the most obvious here. If you look at day one up to Dolgeth, like you've got two days in one. Uh, and it's, it's the same sort of further up as well for, for a lot of the days. Uh, and up here, it doesn't go to Dolgeth and it skips. It goes over from Old Shabod to Kapakiri. But, but, but one of the days, uh, so here from Dolgeth to Transvinith, I thought, you know, that there's there's only really one possibility, unless you want to do an entire traverse of the Rinogas. I didn't want to do that, mostly because if you want to do that, you could just do the Cambrian Way, which is, of course, a very beautiful long, long trail all the way through Wales uh, that really sticks to the mountain peak. And I thought, well, so instead we're going over uh, Igarn here, uh, which is, um, and this day is just, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's a, it's, it's a long day. And it, it's actually one of the lowest mountains you go over <laughs> on the whole route. <laughs> So it just sort of, it's, you sort of look at it and you're like, oh, it, so you sort of leave Dolgeth right and you're up the, the mountain on the summit, looking at the view, hopefully, uh, reasonably quickly. And then the descent off the other side, I can't remember how I described it in the book. I do have a copy here, but I'll have, it's, yeah, it's, it's just like you sort of take a bearing towards a forest and just sort of find your way down, which is, of course, the fun bit about walking in the outdoors. And I kind of hoped that people are doing the mountain route would, would have, People that have chosen a mountain walking route would, would have those privileges. But it is a, a long way um, and quite rough, uh, which I think actually very well sort of um, captures the, the essence of, of Snowdonia beyond the, the most well trodden paths up Snowdon. Actually, it is very rough and wild, and it's extremely easy to end up taking an hour to go a kilometre. Um, but yeah, I don't know what my favourite My favourite day is probably um, Penrind Day Drive to uh, Beth Gellert. This one up here, you, 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 a, lot, a lot of it's the same route as the low level route through the uh, part of Aberglaslin in the north, which anyone knows is this wonderful gorge, um, which the Victorians very kindly planted lots of lovely Scots pine trees along it, so it looks very pretty. Uh, but then you also go up uh, Mowen Mower and Knick, um, which is this fantastic little horseshoe, two peaks, They're very famous. Uh, yeah, it's probably my favourite day. Yeah, nice. I suppose um, a question I have is that you've done it south to north um, with this. Could you walk it north to south? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can. There's, there's nothing. Um, I, I think most, most weirdly, most, well, not that weirdly, I mean, there's, there's a reason for it. But a lot of trails in the UK are designed to go south to north or west to east uh, because of the where the weather comes from. Um, you know, anyone will know that our prevailing weather is southwest. So, you can therefore see that you don't want to be walking into the, the rain if it comes. And of course, it doesn't, as you've seen from these photos, it doesn't rain in Wales. But if it were to rain in Wales, then that wouldn't be great for, for walking south. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you can. And I've had people commenting on, on, on the Facebook group that they've walked it south. Um, obviously, that you'd have to sort of reverse the directions. But yeah, it'd be, I mean, there's, there's, there'd be nothing different about it. And I'm sure it would open it up in a whole new way. You'd go from the more popular part to the less mm, popular part. Right. So that might be that might be sort of feeling of going more remote. But the reason I did it like this is firstly because you start you know, Mahanthus on, on is, is the ancient capital of Wales. It's where Oenglundo had his first parliament. Sort of, uh, this was was bidding to be the capital of even of modern Wales. Um, and you know, so you, you're, you're starting somewhere quite symbolic and somewhere quite that feels quite you know remote, somewhere quite far away from. The big you know, uh, cities and um, you know, um, uh, settlements, uh, and then you're going north to you know the, the busy area in sort of Conwy and, and and the sea. I think finishing at the sea is quite a uh, a nice feeling, some way. I don't know. And it's quite a there's a British tradition, isn't it, with all these long distance routes? I feel like a lot of them do finish at the sea. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you you mentioned um, the kind of remoteness of perhaps the southern end as opposed to the northern 
Um, we've got a question from Sue Cooper asking, is it reasonably well signposted? The, the Snowdonia Way or the South yes. of Snowdonia? Oh, um, oh, I suppose no. both. So, so the Snowdonia Way, uh, to answer Sue's question, is, is not signposted at all. Um, and that was uh, a conscious decision. I, I mean, I, I haven't pushed for it. So I, I just sort of wrote this out as a route and created the guidebook of Cicero and very kindly uh, published. Whether they regret that, I'm not going to have to ask them. Um, but um, uh, no, I, I obviously, you know, I'm just an individual, you know, and I, I didn't want to signpost it because firstly, it's up to it's up to people that, that live in an area, really, if they want to have a long distance route signposted through their land. Um, there's logistical hurdles about getting permissions for putting signs up. Uh, although, of course, all, all of this is on public rights of way, so that you know you can walk it. That's fine. But uh, you know, so no, there, there are no. There's no such thing as a signpost saying Snowdonia Way this way, any, anywhere at all. It's, it's about finding your way and um, sort of using the, the book and enjoying sort of discovering it, which makes it a little bit more more wild and sort of. I know that some people are really attracted to that kind of walking, so that's what I was aiming it at. Um, but of course, on a lot of sections, uh, there are because they are footpaths, they're public rights of way. There are signposts saying this is a footpath. That makes sense. You know, there are yellow, yellow arrows you get which point you in the right direction, and often they're mentioned in the book to help people pick the right, the right um, path or trail. So, no, it's it's not signposted as the Snowdonia way, but many bits are signposted just as footpaths in general. And I suppose people see <laughs> your guidebook. I don't know if we have. To this one yes, yeah oh absolutely the GPS. Yeah. yeah 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 i spent a long time with a gps walking the whole thing trying to before i realized that you could just draw it on maps online <laughs> it would load <laughs> up the same route uh yeah i had this gps um yes there are gps trails that, that, that you can follow um absolutely and i'll show you whether you're getting lost or not mm. <laughs> um, i suppose another another question on logistics um and I suppose talking about current moment um, in terms of accommodation, you've mentioned that some places don't have accommodation, um, but what sort of accommodation is available on the route? And you know, would you expect people to backpack it? Well, tents? so just just to clarify that, I say I said some places. I think was it just one? <laughs> it's, it's only really Beth so so Bethesda. When I wrote the guidebook, had one B and B that I think since is shut. Um, there may have been a bit, it may have been accommodation that has opened last summer that I've just missed and I'm unaware of. So please do Google it. Or uh, having said that, um, that's what you know official accommodation. There may well be many Airbnbs in Bethesda that I don't know about. So uh, Airbnb is fantastic, I think, it's especially opening up places where you know no one wants to invest in them. people don't you know, don't have facilities to invest in an Airbnb or a hotel, but people still want to stay there. So that might be a, a um, that might be there. Everywhere else does have accommodation and they have a range of, um, of different options from campsites, hostels, up to hotels. There's a huge different range everywhere. Um, and even from Bethesda, you can get a bus very quickly to Bangor. Um, the place that probably has the second least am amount of accommodation, although it still has a campsite and a hotel, is, is still with Elan, the end of stage four. Just, uh, but you can, get a, you can get a train actually to Better Sequoid. Um, or a bus. Oh, very nice. So yeah, it's um, it's extremely easy to um, I mean, all these settlements are in uh, are in really really helpful places, and they're either sort of started by the Romans or by sort of medieval um, princes. So I'm, I'm really grateful for them for putting all of these villages and really helpful useful places that are exactly a day walk's length apart. Um, but yeah, there there are places to stay everywhere. I think accommodation is is very easy to find. Mm. Um, we've got a comment from uh, one of our regular listeners um, in Bar Aran. The most challenging part of this walk is pronouncing the names of the towns along it, yeah. <laughs> which I'm, I'm quite glad that you went through and pronounced them all so that I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ab ab absolutely. Oh, I've had many, um, I've had many faux pas trying to pronounce Welsh <laughs> uh, place names. Uh, I tell you what, though, just on that, I find uh, actually understanding Welsh place names. Is, is actually when you get into it quite easy um, because it's it's all phonetical. You just have to pronounce a few things slightly differently to English, um, like a double D is a the, um, and obviously a double L is a f. But actually, once you and, and an F is like a V, which is similar to German if you, if, if you speak German. Um, but it, but everything is actually phonetic. You know, try speaking 
Gaelic or Gaelic and then you get into difficulties because it's very different to how it looks written down whereas Welsh is very similar to how it looks written down and fantastically it's barely changed um, in thousands of years so all of the all of the names are still translatable back to what they originally were um, whereas some of the names even in England the, the the origins of the net of the places that have been lost like the, we don't quite know there were guesses obviously they, but they don't know what it originally meant because in Wales there's a lot more sort of it's easier to understand and you do expect in your guidebooks um because I edited Snowdonia Way not Snowdonia Way Snowdonia Low Level and Easy Walk South um, and you have a really nice bit in the introduction explaining some of the different um Welsh words and how they get used in place names yeah, absolutely. And you'll see those names. I mean, I've just, yeah, just, you're right. Yeah, it's just a little glossary at the front, which has only maybe got seven or eight uh, just sort of landscape names, like what river means, what you know, what hill, different words for hill in, in Welsh, which is, of course, really useful if you're reading a map because you can tell what something is, even if you can't really work out what it is by seeing it on the map. Um, and, and you will see all of those words used in place names. They're not just descriptive words to describe like lake or river. They are actually used in a name. Um, which is really quite quite helpful, actually. <laughs> Thank you, Welsh people <laughs> of, of the past <laughs> for, for, for making them all very, but they're very descriptive, which is, of course, what a lot of place names, you know, were, where they come, where they came from. You know, people didn't travel uh, huge distances. You know, places would be named after local features, which is, you know, sort of makes sense, and they still are, which is great. Like Charles Vinneth, just to give you an example. Um, yes. Right in the centre, Charles Vinneth, this means across the mountain because it's quite high up and it's where people would have stopped whilst going across the mountain. Uh, you know, oh, it's, lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Um, there, there's quite a lot, an interesting story about the origins of Penryn, uh, which is this, that, that was the hardest one I found to pronounce. And it took me, and um, um, there are probably lots of um, Welsh speakers writing angry emails, even at this moment hearing me try and pronounce it. But, you know, actually, um, we've just had a question from uh, Sandy know. Brown asking how to pronounce it. <laughs> OK, so it's pen, pen, rin, pen rin, uh day drive, which means the headland between the two beaches. Right. So and it's at the moment. So that, and that's what it used to be. But that's it's, it's a reasonably old settlement. Um, but if you go there now, so the two beaches, um, there's, there's an estuary to the south here. And there's an estuary, was an estuary to the north, which is where the glassland, Avon glassland, comes out into the sea. But that's all been silted up. So they built the cob to Port Maddox, which has turned all of this land into farmland, no longer an estuary. So Penrindo Drive at the moment doesn't make sense anymore. There's only one beach. It's not between beaches. It's between beaches and farmland. So that's enough. But you, can, um, you can buy the book to read more about that story. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe we should move on to your other yeah, yeah. two books. Um, but yes, yeah, so that was the Snowdonia Way, and people can find out plenty more about that by going to snowdoniaway.com, which I believe that's the website you run. Alex? Uh, yeah, sort of. It's not as spectacularly up to date, so maybe just go to the Cicerone website. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, to be fair, if anyone has any genuine questions about it, the, the Snowdonia Way Facebook page, I can find it updated. So if anyone has any questions, you can leave us a message and we can post answers and let people comment on them if you're interested. So yeah, that was probably the best Brilliant. place. Yeah, um, and I feel like now is, before we go on to talking about the next two books, um, if people have been inspired by, um, talk about the Snow in Your Way or these up to, upcoming two books, um, we are running an offer for um, you, the listener, um, for 25% off printed books, and which includes free UK postage. And this is on um, Alex's three books. So the Snow in Your Way, Snowdonia Low Level and Easy Walks North and also on the pre-order for Snowdonia Low Level and Easy Walks South. Um, yeah, so if you use the code on the website Snowdonia25, you can get 25% off and it's for the first 50 customers. So yes, hopefully you've been inspired and want to set off and do this route and yeah, so Snowdonia25, use that um, at the checkout on Cicerone website. So, that sounds great, I'm going to go and get some. <laughs> um, so if people don't want to do a week-long trek um, but would still like to explore Snowdonia um, you do have these two other books to low level and easy walking. Um, Snowdonia North is already out, I think that's been out for about a year. Yeah it's been out for um, 
yeah, about a year. I think it came out in in June last year, I think. Yes, or 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 July. Oh, yeah, I think it is about it's it's about a year. Uh, everything sort of everything melds into one. <laughs> I think it was uh, last year. I remember. Um, yes, here it is. Is the front cover? I, yeah, I hope you can all see the front cover. My PowerPoint is still working, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So, um, do we, sorry, was there a question? Or should I just launch into? Just go for it. <laughs> okay, just go for it. Brilliant. Yeah, so I mean, as, as you said, if, if anyone listening to this is thinking, um, you know, long distance walking trail is not for me, that's not my favourite way of discovering a place. Um, you know, of course, obviously, there are lots of mountains and hills in Snowdonia that um, are not obviously covered by what we're about to talk about. And I'm sure Amy will be at pains to point out the throne do publish a mountain walking book as well, and a scrambling book. Uh, and and there are other uh, other long distance trails are available, <laughs> um, but so but I wanted to p p mostly because there was already a mountain book, and actually because I quite enjoy discovering the sort of the lower level uh, valleys, uh, estuary, river sides, lakes, and that the kind of walks that you would sort of do almost without thinking about it. you were sort of out wandering about. But um, as um, as was pointed out, I used to well actually you know used to uh, a lot more work as a sort of outdoor leader. And walking guide and I used to take people on mostly low-level walks and uh, Snowdonia was um, so one, of the, one, of the, one of the best places for that I think because there's a huge range of different sort of interesting features that you can make sort of a target of a walk rather than a mountain summit you know say whether you want to go to a castle or whether you want to explore a lakeside or waterfalls uh, some of the top ones lots of waterfalls in Snowdonia you could almost write a book just about waterfalls that's an idea for the next book uh, anyway, um, yeah, so, so yeah, Sardinia North, um, it, it seemed obvious, you can see the map here, to, to, to divide uh, Sardinia up into two um, and to make the north a smaller area than, than the south of Sardinia. And there's there are kind of a reason for that. I mean, the north has, it's, it's, it's more popular, it's got more trails um, that are sort of easier to find your way around. Uh, and it's got a few more accommodation options and the south had well, well we'll talk about the south in, in later but yeah i mean the north it's, it's a spectacularly beautiful place i mean it's not um it, it's not somewhere that you should just go you know, walk up snowden and then think you, you've done it you know you could do all of the cicerone guides to snowdonia and you still wouldn't have seen everything um it might take you a lifetime by the way but um it's definitely that's definitely a challenge um but yeah, and there are some fantastic places that even I discovered that I hadn't seen before while, while writing this book. Uh, there were mostly walks that I, that I knew, obviously, uh, but there were things that I found out about the area that um, I had no idea um, existed and, and places that I, that, I'd, that I read up about when I was doing the research um, that were just fascinating. There's some really, really good, um, and you know, it's impossible to mention them all because there are hundreds of them, really good sort of local histories and little local historians. And a lot of the books are actually available in sort of corner shops and other like visitor centers when you're around Sardinia. that really specific. So sometimes books about one town or village or valley, you know, and that kind of research really lent, gets you to discovering places. A lot of that was the basis for some of the walks. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just sort of where we, where we focus on. Um, put another photo up. Yeah, that's probably one of my favourite spots. And that's sort of from the, the lower end of the Vale of Festiniog, looking up. Um, in fact, this is what we were just talking about. This is, the, this is what used to be the Glaslin Estuary. That still is the Avon Glaslin. Well, that's not the main body of it, it's on the left. But, but so that used to be a sandy estuary. And then they, they built the Cobb, which is this long sort of embankment, which I'm standing on. Um, and that, that silted it up. Um, so to allow um, farmland and there were cattle in the distance. Uh, so yeah, that's looking up at um, well, yeah, that's Snowden in the distance on sort of the middle left, uh, and then there's uh, Knicht on the on the far right with the shadow going right. Um, so yeah, you can see why you know sometimes going to a different spot rather than the famous bit, you get this really interesting perspective. Um, and if you don't feel like walking, there's a train line right behind me, so you could take that instead. <laughs> I think um, finding more hidden. <laughs> Um, you know, not popular spots is going to be something that's really important to do this year. Um, and we can talk about this with your upcoming book, Snowdonia South, as well. Um, but, you know, what would you, what place would you suggest that people go to um, or how to find a more secluded route? 
Yeah, uh, well, there's a danger in that, isn't it? If you suggest one place that's secluded, then suddenly it's not secluded anymore. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think just let's just see what the next slide is. Oh, no, that's the south. Okay, let's keep on this photo. Um, what, 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 what advice can you give, really? I mean, if how about some advice for anyone listening to this or that's going to listen to this? If you're planning to go to Snowdonia on a holiday this year, make yourself go, uh, don't go to anywhere that you've heard of right now. Okay, so so if you've heard of it at the time you hear this, don't go there. Uh, go and get a book, preferably one of mine, <laughs> uh, unless you want to do the mountains, in which course, get the other, the mountains is your own book, and go up something that you hadn't heard of, or you had just hadn't been up. And if everyone does that, um, then they'll probably spread everyone out. You know, I, I think you know, the, you, you see it everywhere. Like obviously, people are going to try and rush to do to do Snowden or to, to do. I hate that phrase. And do a mountain. People will rush to try and walk up Snowden by the popular route straight away. And um, if, if there's any time not to do it, uh, now is the time. But to be honest, a lot of this advice that they're getting about, about you know reducing crowds and helping to protect everyone is, is advice that really you know people should be taking all the time. Uh, you know choose less popular places you know obviously don't drop litter and don't like disposable barbecues i mean i'm surprised that even needs to be said but you know spread the the, the load on the national park you know believe it or not you know from the scenes you saw in may um was it may yeah when before lockdown when everyone rushed to climb snowden on the last weekend and it was absolute pandemonium and there was cars parked just left on the road now, you wouldn't think, but actually, believe it or not, Snowdonia is one of the, it's definitely not one of the most popular national parks in Britain. It's, it's probably about halfway down the list. It's, it's, you know, it gets nowhere near the number of visitors than the Lake District. It's, it's got four times fewer visitors than the Lake District. It's got fewer visitors than the Yorkshire Dales. It's got fewer visitors than the North York Moors. And obviously they have their popular places, but they don't seem to have the absolutes. Sort of travesty of people just you know you, you can't just abandon your car in the middle of the road just because you want to go walking up a mountain I and mean, there are thousands of other you know places to go and, and visit so I, it's 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 just Snowden and the unfortunate popularity uh, that it's got by people that just want to climb the highest without really thinking about the quality of the day they're going to have so yeah explore there's some fantastic coastline even just outside the Snowdonia National Park you've got the Flynn Peninsula or the Penn Flynn as it should be called uh, you've got the whole of Anglesey, which is just half an hour away from the base of Snowdon. So, you know, think of think of different things. You know, you've got the Great Orm, you've got the whole of South Snowdonia, you know, it's, it's an enormous area. So I think, yeah, how about get a get a guidebook? Uh, I, can, I can suggest some. <laughs> uh, and if you've yeah, find something that you've never heard of before and go there instead. I think that's really brilliant advice. To, yeah. to anyone that's watching this at the far future you'll know whether this is a good idea or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i think one of the things that i was a bit concerned about you know doing an event about snowdonia was are we just going to be telling people to go somewhere that's already mobbed but if we're telling people to find um yeah more hidden or um less explored places i think that's a really positive thing to be saying um yeah. and should we should we move on to talking about snowdonia south then if that's really? a, a less um less popular spot because it doesn't have you know the crowds of people going up Snowden. Absolutely. It's um sorry, was that the end of the question? <laughs> yeah, so so this guidebook okay. is um it's coming out in September. September, yeah. Yeah. They're not Sadly, quite available this yet. Summer, <laughs> I know. Um it's, it's, it's not available yet, but there are. If you're if you're keen to visit Southern Snowdonia this summer, um, there are quite a few walks. Which well, you can. I, I, I mean, you can. Probably, there are quite a few walks where there are sort of ideas of where to go on the snow already. So if you're really keen, I definitely suggest heading over there um, to Southern Snowdonia, and um, there are a lot, quite lots of places to stay, and you will find some spectacular views, just like one of my, my favourites. Uh, which is on the front cover of the book that you can see there, uh, which is looking out the Malbec estuary to the sea. Uh, so one of the best bits about Southern Snowdonia, which you will, uh, you eagle-eyed uh, watchers, um, I believe viewers is the actual term, isn't it? Not watchers, that's a bit weird. Um, anyway, what, you, what you'll be able to see 
is that um, Southern Snowdonia is the only real bit of the actual national park that has a coastline. Um, the, the north, you know, sort of near Conwy, it feels like it has a coastline, but actually the national park doesn't, apart from right at Conwy, actually doesn't at all reach the sea. And you get these quite lowlands to the south of Bangor, which sort of obstructs your direct view of the sea. But here you've got this incredibly uh, beautiful coastline that stretches all around, and of course continues further south into mid Wales, all the way down through Cardiganshire, all the way to Pembrokeshire. And well, and, and from any of these mountains on a clear day, you can see all the way down to Pembrokeshire. So um, yeah, and you can see the whole coastline of Cardigan Bay, which is an absolutely, uh, you know, incredibly beautiful place. Uh, and that's actually probably one of my favourite parts of South Sudan is, is the coastline. Um, believe it or not, this is a bit of trivia for everyone. Um, Snowdonia actually has the second longest coastline out of any UK national park. Just that. Really? Yeah, so obviously the longest is Pembrokeshire. I don't think that was in any doubt since it was created for the coastline. Uh, but yes, Snowdonia has the second longest of any UK national. So uh, yeah, go and explore this bit. And of course, in this southern guide, uh, I've got a few walks that obviously explore this coastline. But they're all circular walks, or well, they're mostly circular walks, actually, they're not all circular. Um, I think that's what's really just... nice, actually, is that it does explore the estuaries and, um, yeah, really beautiful sea views. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, like Barmouth and Harlech. Ah, oh, since you mentioned Barmouth. <laughs> that photo appeared. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it has. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Good example. Yeah, so this is a, this is a, a walk. This is me saying the book now, but um, you're going to buy it, I'm sure. You can pre-order it already, by the way. Not oh, everyone's pre-ordered it, of course. Uh, yeah, this is the fantastic uh, town of Barmouth. Um, well, this is a bench. This isn't Barmouth, uh, but the town is just below us. And uh, yeah, this is standing on top of Dinar Solu, which is the um, uh, the first ever National Trust property. So that's all began. Uh, you can walk up there and on, on one of the walks, of course, um, and yeah, explore the area. And of course, then you've got further south here uh, towards Fairbourne and around that area as well. And this is the, the Malbach estuary. But yeah, what, what a place. Look at those sand dunes. You get quite a lot of sand dunes in, in, in Snowdonia, especially up near Harlech. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and actually in the north Snowdonia as well, uh, just around from Port Paddock, there are lots of sand dunes. But uh, not a landscape most people typically associate, I think, with, with Snowdonia. But actually, there's quite a lot of very beautiful sand dunes. I mean, if, if, if for, for some people, they will be obvious, you know, you, you'll have gone to Shell Island and uh, the, that coast around Harlech when you were, when you were children, but a lot of people won't, won't know this area at all. Um, yeah, no, what I was going to say about the map, uh, as you can see, there's a much bigger area that comes to South Sudania. So people that are wondering where, where the walks go, well, actually, you can see the map on the, on the Cicerone website, but, you know, I've tried to spread them out, and this was the difficult thing. It's very easy to um, a lot of all the walks along the most beautiful bits of coastline and obviously up the Malbec estuary around Dogethlai, which is probably the most signposted and popular place. You know, you've got Cadaridris as well, which is the very most popular mountain in South Sudan. Um, but, you know, further east, you've got Bala, you know, you've got, you've got the Arenigs, you've got some brilliant mountains and some actual, some low level and easy walks that are in this book around that area. Um, but, you know, I've, try, I've tried to get in there to, to spread the interest and so that you can discover different parts of this part of the National Park. And obviously it can, can translate which appears on this map here as it will be. Um, it's possibly well it's the uh, one of the only uh, walking guides that takes you past a um, nuclear power station which uh, I know everyone's keen to see but I've got ever well you may not know yet Lincoln Transvenith this lake has on its shores the UK's only inland nuclear power station which is currently being decommissioned See it while it's there, um, is all I'd say. Uh, if, you, if, if you're fed up of beautiful views, you can see two enormous concrete cubes, uh, which, you know, is That's different. how to sell it. <laughs> it's a great, I'm sure it's a great Instagram self for someone. Um, but yeah, there's some incredible, and you know, that's not even, yeah, and of course down here, you've got Dinas Madhuri, uh, you've got the Arons. There, there's, the, you know, it's, it's spread around this area, really, all the different walks. Um, lots of place to see. Actually, weirdly, slightly ironically, considering we were just talking about Barmouth, Barmouth isn't in the National Park. Uh, so I've got a walk there, but as you just see, you can see just above the D of Cadaridris on this map, there's a, there's a gap right there. Why is that? Do you know? I'm actually not sure. Um, normally, areas like that are left out of National Parks so that they can develop and build new 
buildings without having to go through the National Park Planning Commission. Sort of right. Bits, just like uh, Blind Estiniog is this famous big circle right in the middle of mm. the northern part. Uh, so that, that's normally why areas are left out, uh, particularly the sort of towns. The National Park Authority don't want to have to deal with planning permission for towns, because that's not really why they're there. Uh, and just as you see down here, you've got Tawin also, just below Cadridris on this coast, you've got Tawin just there, which is a big chunk taken out of it. That's not because they're abandoning it to the sea, although <laughs> they should. Uh, it's um, just because it's, uh, yeah, it's just, I imagine they'd let it uh, build what they want. Uh, yeah, and of course Abu Dhabi down here, very popular um, seaside resort, which is inside the National Park. So who knows? Um, these, these, this designation was in 1951, so I have to go and find someone to ask. I think. So if you've taken us through yeah, various places there, um, and I suppose on a practical level, it would be good to talk about how to actually get to Snowdonia and um, you know what the public transport, I suppose, is like for getting around. Yeah, um, the public transport in Snowdonia, and I think there, there are some locals in Snowdonia that would probably um, <laughs> not agree with me, but I, I think it's actually really good. Uh, it's definitely better, say, than where I live uh, in the, um, I won't name it, it's a bit hard there, but the, um, the north of England, uh, where, there, where there is one local bus that goes twice a day, and that's it. Uh, you know, Snowdonia actually has really good bus connections, and there are, it, it, however, whatever you think about them, they are much cheaper than the latest. Um, you can get from north to south Sardinia for about a fiver on the bus, um, which is pretty decent. Um, yeah, there's, 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 there's train lines. You can get the train into, I don't actually, I know, I know you, Amy, you asked me, I think you asked me to pick up this map, which I have. I've forgotten to do that. I know, so it's all right. <laughs> everyone listening now will have to just, just picture in your mind's eye the beautiful landscape of Sardinia and imagine trains and buses uh, and all things with wheels that we so, well, we, at the moment, actually just the, uh, we have to wear masks on Welsh uh, and I believe English bring your mask if you're planning in the next half, at least until before then. Um, so yeah, so so you, you, you've got two train lines. You've got a train line that comes in uh, from sort of from Shrewsbury towards uh, enters the park at Mahanthus and then goes all the way up the coast to Port Maddox. Uh, you've got one that comes in obviously from the north and it goes down to Blanus. You know, but getting the train very uh, good way of getting into Sardinia. It goes right into the heart of it, which is extremely useful. Um, and then actually from there, you've got pretty decent uh, local bus network uh, that goes anywhere. I think if you look at uh, the website, travelline.com, it says it's, it's generally mostly up to date sometimes, although once it told me to go to a bus stop that didn't exist. But <laughs> apart from that, uh, do your research, obviously. But um, yeah, they're, 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 they're very good bus. And if you, um, Certainly, if you're traveling from um, one town or village to another, it's extremely easy to get around. Um, and, uh, and I know most of your walks are usually circular rather than linear, but I suppose it is a useful thing to do, isn't it, to be able to link up um, from one place to another. And I believe that you do usually say the bus route that you can take. Absolutely, yeah. Um, most of the walks, bar a few that st happen to start in reasonably remote places. Uh, most of them are accessible by public transport. Um, and the linear walks of which there are one or two in each of the books, just to provide some kind of like journey, if people like to go linear for the day, uh, there is details on how to actually get back to where you started if you don't have a two cars to shuttle. Um, so there's one, for example, where you walk from Bombay to um, to the coast, sort of near sort of south of Harlech, and you're sort of crossing the Rinogid Mountains in South Sardinia, which is a fantastic old um, old drover's route, actually, where people used to take sort of livestock from the coast inland on the on the route to London. Um, and once you arrive at the coast, you can you can quite easily get a bus back. Or um, actually, just a top tip for anyone doing that: if you're doing a linear walk anywhere, uh, including in uh, one that I've suggested, I would do any public transport in the morning rather than when you get there. So as in arrive somewhere, park, get the bus back to the start and then walk to your car rather than having to rely on making it for the last bus because then you always know that your car is at the end rather than 
you have to get there for uh, the last whatever train or bus or because especially now when spaces might be more limited to some of public transport um do that because there's nothing worse than getting there and then having to fork out 50 quid for a taxi i think that's such yes. rich advice and i will be remembering that <laughs> Well, we've, yeah. we've, we've all uh, <laughs> made those mistakes. Yeah, yeah I, I suppose as well, um, in terms of, you know, finding where you need to go to, um, Snowdonia South is the first Cicero and Guide, I believe, to use what three words as a navigational aid. Um, so I was wondering if you could explain to us briefly what that is and how important it is in an area like Snowdonia. Absolutely. So um, for those of you that don't know what what three words is, uh, you have a have a have a have a have a Google search after this and just um, um, familiarise yourself with it. But it's it's a really useful tool. There's a company uh, that effectively have, have made it um, as a um, sort of a not-for-profit navigation tool. Uh, so what it does is it's it's divided the entire Earth up into three by three meter squares. So every single place you are in the world has a what three words address in a way you can think of it as an address made up of three words, hence the name, what three words. Um, if, 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 you, if, you're, if, if, if you're searching for it, if you want to find out more about it, type it in as one word. So W-H-A-T, what, then the, the number three, and then words. And yeah, so everywhere has a three meter by three meter address made up of three randomly selected words by the computer program. And they will always remain the same. So if you know the three word address for a place you want to go to, uh, that will always be that three meter by three meter. Um, and it's very useful for what they've been, uh, I think it's been originally targeting like um, emergency services, trying to access people in places where um, they're unsure about the address. Like sometimes addresses don't make sense. We all know when we've typed a, um, a postcode into a sat nav and it's taken us to somewhere that doesn't seem to bear any relation to where we we're trying to go. And especially in the country, a postcode can um, apply to a very, quite a large area, um, especially in somewhere like South Sardinia. So what I've done is is allowed is given the what three words address a three meter by three meter block the where the walks start, um, which is very useful for drive. And what you can do then is if you download the app, the what three words app, you can type the words in, in into it, uh, and then you can then link that. You, you can press a button, and that will take you into Google Maps, or uh, which you can then use to navigate to that exact spot, rather than just trying to type in a postcode and then trying to work out where it is you will be taken exactly there uh, which is really useful for like remote laybys um odd start locations up roads um uh, it's, 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 things things like that really um i think it's really useful um there has been some criticism just just to say just before i uh, there, there might be some kickback on this the the criticism from mountain rescue has been that people think that 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 using what three words is a supplement for being able to know how to navigate when you're out on the mountains. So people are just wandering about the mountains and because they've got the app, they think that if they tell what Mountain Rescue their what three words address of where they've had their accident, that'll make sense. Um, but obviously because uh, they are words and obviously people pronounce words differently, if you're trying to say three words over a dodgy phone line to someone in the rain and Mountain Rescue, they might type in wrong. If you type in one letter wrong, it'll take might take you to South America. So it's it, it, it don't use it as a tool for navigation. Don't you as in in the mountains or on your walks. Purely include it as a good way of getting to sort of roadside locations. Um, so yeah, there's there's just been a bit of a bit of sort of uh, what's, what's the word? Not criticism, but just like hesitancy about this sort of use for it you know it's, it's very much a roadside tool not a mountain tool uh, but it's very very good uh, and, it, and it works and i suggest any anyone that doesn't know what it is search for it download the app and then it will make sense you'll get a map you'll be able to see the what three words address of exactly where you are right now because even in your side even in your house you've got a what three words address i think we all went around the office actually and figured out where yeah. all the yeah. were what desk yeah um i suppose we've got um I suppose maybe one final question um, from the viewers and then I'll, I'll ask my final question. Um, do you still do guided tours in Wales? Do, no, I don't. Um, no. no, not anymore. But depending on what kind of guided tour you want, I can direct you to some really good. Um, 
well basically there's um if you want a low level group style walk in north wales i would suggest a company called large outdoors which i used to work for which do very kind of social gatherings they'll get together in accommodation they have nice walks they eat together it's all very nice gentle mostly low level um if you sign up to some, what some of their low level ones obviously they do mountains as well uh, if you want to walk the snowdonia way guided uh, the only company i think that does that guided is thistle trekking uh, so check out their website they did have a date this summer but I don't know what to that, obviously. Um, and i believe there are some self-guided companies that were organized uh, but i'm not sure what they are brilliant thank you um i'm afraid that's all we've really got time for today um but i want to ask you one final question which is you know obviously you've clearly spent so much time in Snedonia um, over a number of years writing these three guidebooks but is there one experience that um, you know stands out for you as maybe exemplifying the whole Snedonia experience? Oh you know what I remember um, reading this as a question I get asked this all the time uh, so what's the one and I, I really don't think there is one um, I think you know I started writing the Snedonia Way in 2015. So that's five years of writing various sort of guidebooks in, about mm -hmm. North Wales and guiding people around. And I think, you know, I, I think actually doing the doing all of them, it's it's lots of little moments of um, discovering somewhere totally new that probably lots of people knew about. I just hadn't been there before and sort of stumbling upon these incredible uh, places uh, that, that I just hadn't been to. Um, Number one of those kind of places is woodlands. Actually, there are some absolutely incredible sort of it's it's Atlantic temperate rainforest really um, in in this area. That is the small chunks left. You know, there's not much. We sort of in the whole of Britain, we've destroyed about ninety percent of it. But you know, those are absolutely incredible. There was a bluebell photo if anyone saw that a few slides ago that shows what they could be like. But I think it's just lots of little things that sort of built up really seeing new places, which is hopefully what everyone will get when they come and walk. Them. <laughs> well hopefully what they have done but yeah that, that was the best bit um i mean there, there were definitely some moments of going the wrong way and falling in bogs and things like that but, but that's um I've, I've burned those from my memory <laughs> because they were so awful and don't worry none of the routes go that way but you've got to find the wrong route before you write about the right route it's a good way isn't it it could be on a t-shirt <laughs> that's a really nice place to end actually <laughs> <laughs> with that so yeah thank you so much Alex for taking us through um yeah the secrets of Snowdonia and from about the Snowdonia way um put these up actually so these are your three books I'm trying to uh show people which books they can get using the oh, I've got um well I've got there two go. oh, okay that's fine yeah you're sharing. Oh, look at them. Yes. Hello. So there we are. Those are Alex's three books, which you can get 25% discount on um, using that code you said earlier, uh, free UK postage. And it is just these three books using that code. Um, but yes, so thank you so much for listening and joining us tonight. Um, there's lots of other things that you can do um, to find out more. So yes, our upcoming events are go to visit cicerone.co.uk slash events you can see all of our upcoming events you can also sign up to our newsletter and join our facebook group cicerone connect which is a really nice community um, and yeah you can also watch all of our previous events on youtube uh, we've got one with paddy dylan about lightweight backpacking so you might find that interesting if you're thinking about setting out on the snedonia way um, so yeah thank you so much for joining us and hopefully see you in a week's time to talk about the Cambrian Way with Richard Tyler and some of the guests. So thank you very much. Thanks everyone.